The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good Monday morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien coming to you live from TFNN just after 9 a.m. Eastern time as we kick off the trading week in about 24 minutes and we have markets in positive territory. We kick off the new quarter, the new month as well quite the month in September for negative prices. We kick things off to begin October with the S&Ps up about 1% right now. You see the acceleration and things were looking a little dicey last night. Going to bed at about 11 p.m. Eastern time, you had the S&Ps down about 30 points this morning. We're up about 40 points. That's a swing of about 70, 70 points from where we were last evening. Futures accelerating higher. We got yields a little bit lower today. We got some action in currencies, as is usually the case recently. We have the NASDAQ 100. We had a 10,000 handle overnight. Pretty remarkable, folks. What's the high? 16,600 or something? 16,700. And we got a 10,000 handle, folks. We came into COVID at 97. 63. So you're almost talking about the NASDAQ giving it all back in terms of where you were. That's right, 97.63, and you make it down to about 10,900. Last night, we're back above 11,000 this morning on the NASDAQ 100. You get the Dow up 1.1%, back above 29,000, 29,132. You get the Russell up almost 1.5% this morning. Crude catching a bid. We got some OPEC news this morning. Uh, they may be cutting, is the word. Crude climbing to almost $84. We spent the most of last week in the 70s for the price of crude. Interesting there. We jump to the commodities. Gold up about $2. Gold was down to $16.22 on Wednesday. We're up at about $16.75 this morning. And we jump to notes and bonds. And there's your action for higher price and lower yield right now. You got the 10-year soaring about 23 ticks. You talk about some action, man, in the note and bond market. Yields, volatility. Uh, it seems normal, folks, because that's what's been going on for some time. But, boy, these types of swings, when you're talking about, I mean, just the move on Wednesday was magnificent in terms of the action. You got over two full points on Wednesday. Friday, you accelerate in terms of lower price, higher yield into the close. And just like that, we're up almost a full point from where we were of Friday's close on the 10-year. The 30-year is up a full point and 18 ticks right now at 127.30. We jump over to the volatility index, 31.30. We ended last week at about 33. We take a look at this thing. Let's put it on a daily and just zoom in on the action on this year so far. And uh, that seems like a pretty reasonable spike, folks. You know, I was talking about back when the VIX was at 28. All right, just comparing it to the spikes of this year. So we're not talking about COVID spikes. We're not talking about uh, fears of the world ending through a pandemic VIX spikes, which brought us all the way, just for some context here, to 85.47, okay? But since then, you have spikes that are in the high 30s to low 40s. Sometimes you had a 28 there or thereabouts. But you zoom in on the action this year, which I think is most important because that's when the sell-offs have been going on. 38.94, 37.79, you see the highs there, 36 and 35. We were chopping around at 28, even though this is market was selling off. But what did we get? We got a high of 34.88. Uh, comparable to some of the other highs earlier in the year, not quite as high as 35.05, but when you put it on this chart, maybe that's a little bit of an exacerbated fear driving us to almost 35 in the VIX. And just like that, this morning, we opened near 31 on the volatility index. All right, let's jump around to some of the currencies. We'll kick things off with the dollar index this morning. Dollar index on a daily basis. You know, yeah, we got a little bit of a pullback. Now, let's put it on a five minute to see the action so far this morning. Just chopping around really where we were on Friday, right? But you take a look at this thing. That's a weekly. I meant to put it on a daily. Take a look at this thing on a daily. The trend is intact, folks. Okay, that's really what I wanted to showcase at the kickoff of this. The trend is intact. Yes, we peaked out. Okay, but where did we peak out? We peaked out at the top of this channel line that's been intact basically since the beginning of the year, basically the end of January, to be fair. I mean, that trend, you could say, started January 10th, about where you dip into that channel. We really start accelerating to higher prices, uh, essentially the beginning of February, that or thereabouts. I mean, you were at a 95, basically, price point 
in the beginning of February, we're sitting at 112. But keep it in mind, folks, you know, it's an art, not a science. Where exactly those trend lines fall, that would be to your discretion to some degree, right? But I'd say that's a pretty accurate trend line. And you're chopped around at the top portion of it. You traded a little bit lower. So keep that in mind as you get a little bit of a pullback here. Because don't forget the pullbacks that we got, even the one in July. That was quite a pullback, man. You got from 109.29 down to 104. 64, almost five full points, but what'd you do after you got down there? You traded up 10. You traded up 10 full points in the dollar index from 105 to basically 115 in the span of about a month and a half, maybe even less than two months, we'll call it. So we have the dollar index backing off a bit. You make it to the bottom portion of that trend line, maybe 110. 109, something like that on the dollar index. We got some news in the UK. We'll talk about that in a moment as it ties into currencies. We jump over to the euro US dollar right now. And again, uh, obviously, dollar pulling back, euro getting a little bit of a pop, but pretty similar action in terms of a well intact channel line, folks. And the kicker here is that the upper portion of this channel line doesn't even get us back to parity right now. Doesn't even get us back to parity, right? Yeah, you could chop around to parity. You see how the tails have climbed above this channel line on a couple occasions. But folks, if you follow channels, these are pretty defined channel lines right now on a currency basis in terms of where you are. Now, the pound U.S. dollar, that's its own animal, okay? Uh, I was talking about that potentially the pound was a little bit stronger than the yen U.S. dollar, but boy, that was before the breakout. That was before the tax cuts. You break out of that channel line to the downside. Uh, this tail is erroneous, okay? So disregard that. I think you got just below 104 was the real print there on the pound U.S. dollar on the day that we came back after the tax cuts. But nonetheless, look at what we've done, folks. All we've come, all we've done is come back to test that channel line. An ominous sign owed to our man Bud Ross. Love Bud Ross. Gonna miss him. Uh, you come back, you test that channel line, man. You start breaking lower. Watch out, folks, because that is a classic case of breaking out of the channel to the downside, man. You break out, you wait for the retest. That would be the sell. Uh, we'll see what happens as the UK tries to avoid a demise, uh, but we'll see what happens in a big way. And let's jump over to that. So you have Liz Truss. She is backing off already. So much for a strong start, man. Uh, they scrapped the 45% tax rate that had contributed to the market route. And uh, yeah, a uke turn on the UK tax cuts. So this is what stemmed, this is what started the pound collapse, okay? Because you had tax cuts going on. You had tax cuts at a time of record inflation, leading to those to say, hey, you're giving tax cuts, you're flooding the economy with more money at a time of record inflation. That is a big problem. Nonetheless, uh, we get it and we have listened, is what she says. The plan announced just 10 days ago, okay, to scrap the 45% rate of income tax had become a distraction, is how she put it. So you have some pound action on that. Uh, but yeah, I'd say it's a huge embarrassment in terms of just stepping in there, you come out with a big tax cut, the market says, what are you doing, man? Um, and we're gonna see how that plays out, folks. And there's the statement there. That's the Chancellor of the Exchequer, I believe. Yes, it is. Um, yeah, and as they put it, the reversal of such a major policy just a month into their tenure will inevitably spark speculation about both trust and, uh, is it Quartan? Quartang? Is that how you pronounce it? Um, their future. Tough to have any confidence, man, in the people leading your government as they jump in and bungle things so dramatically to kick things off. But the market this morning, we're bouncing. We're bouncing a bit. Relatively near those lows still, though. We're up by 1.1%. We'll be right back, folks. Vista Gold owns and operates the largest undeveloped gold project in Australia, the Mount Todd Gold Project. Vista Gold just completed their feasibility study, resulting in a 7 million ounce gold reserve. Vista Gold has all major permits approved and has retained CIBC capital market assistance in evaluating alternatives and in completing an accretive transaction. Vista Gold trades on the NYSE American and TSX under the ticker symbol VGZ. Vista Gold, executing a strategy to create shareholder value. 
Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We've got markets continuing to accelerate to higher territory right now. You're looking at an S&P now up 43 points, 1.2 percent. NASDAQ 100, a little bit of a laggard right now. You're up by nine tenths percent. Dow up 1.3 and the Russell approaching 1.7 percent at 1700 right now. We jump back to notes and bonds as the run continues, even since we speak, right? You got the 10 year right now up. I mean, look at that pop since we came on the air. Yeah, that was nine ten. These are five minute bars, folks, uh, even since I've been on the air. You got the 10 year up nine ticks or something like that right now. And as we pull it over, just to take a quick look in terms of where we are right now on yields, you're talking about a yield on the 10 year of 3.66%. 3.66%. Let me jump around. I'm going to pull up the yields right now in terms of the lineup. Here we go. So, what are we looking at? You have quite a little jump from where we were just Friday. The two-year right now, 4.1%. The 10-year right now, 3.66%. We're approaching 4%, we're approaching man, even on the 10-year right now. The 30-year pushing 3.66%. Uh, a lot of talk in terms of real estate, right, with mortgage rates. Talking to my dad this weekend. He was over here hanging out with the grandson, with me. Uh, and, of course, we're talking a little bit of business. Uh, just markets, not even talking business. Uh because how can you not, man, with everything going on, right, with interest rates where they are, yields where they are. I've been talking about it as well, man. If you have money, folks, that you're, you know, in a fixed income possibility in terms of whether it's retirement, something like that, yields, approaching levels, you better be looking at them, man. Even on a checking account basis, there are going to be some great deals uh, with yields that we have not seen in some time, man. You know, we're all used to getting nothing for the money in your checking account, and that is not the case right now, folks, with where we are short-term basis, one month, 2.75% is the one month, 30 days is all you got to tie your money up for. So, you know, it's, it's finally worth it, folks, to make sure that if you have cash in any capacity, 
you know, make sure that it's earning that yield um, because the big banks are not going to be giving you that yield, man. It's going to be the banks that are competing, the online banks. And I'll have to spend some time. Maybe we'll do a show on it completely because this is something that we have not seen in some time. You know, in the days of 0%, 0% car loans, et cetera, they are gone for right now. We'll see what happens in the th with the economy if they need to get into a uh, – cutting cycle at any time soon but that is not here folks right now at all okay let's shift to housing from that conversation uh home prices now posting biggest monthly drop since 2009 now what's remarkable here is biggest monthly drop since 2009 you say oh my goodness what is the number what are they dropping these must be big numbers they fell 0.98 percent in august from a month earlier following a 1.05 percent drop in July. Now, over a two-month basis, you have housing prices dropping 2% as we have inflation up 8.5% or whatever it is, okay? So in that context, uh, that should be alarming. Housing prices should not be dropping as an asset when you have the value of a dollar decreasing as is, right? Inflation is raging. Uh, the two periods mark the largest monthly declines since January of 2009. But here's the thing, folks, okay? The market had completely collapsed by that point and was beginning to rebound. There was almost no opportunity over that last period of time because the market had been cleaned out completely. Some of those prices, folks, I think we're all aware of them because it was such a nationwide pandemic of pricing. Pandemic, no pun intended in terms of what's going on right now, but it was a pandemic in the financial markets because it was so pervasive and it affected almost every single community in the country. I was not a homeowner at that time. I was renting, okay? But it still impacted every single community and that you were aware of it. I was just not in that period of my life yet to, to be fortunate in that degree, at least, and, and, and was okay in a renting capacity. Um, and what did that do? That presented an opportunity to be a buyer if you weren't in that market, okay? But from 2009, you're talking about a run that was slow even in the beginning, okay, in terms of there was still ample opportunity, um, whether it was 2012, 13, 14, right? Some of the prices that existed back then, uh, mind-blowing to this day and age. But they don't become as mind-blowing when you look at the mortgage rates. Now, here's what you have to wrap your brain around, and if you solve this one, man, there is a lot of money, and I'm trying to run the levels of depth that are necessary to figure out where the market goes in the housing market. Uh, it's facing some headwinds, to put it lightly, okay? Now, we have rates decreasing today. That's going to be a big factor in the housing prices, but let's just say we're looking at a mortgage rate of about 7.5% right now, and I'll have to run the numbers. I will. But a mortgage rate of about 75, 7.5% right now, okay, I was looking at what a $500,000 mortgage will cost. And I'll run these to be exact. I think it was something like $4,500 or $3,500. Whatever it is, folks, you have a 7.5% mortgage, right? So you have a whole decade, if not more. You have, I mean, who who is in a mortgage right now? that is not vastly benefiting from their interest rate, and I'm not talking about the last, you know, everybody but the last three months as this thing has been rising, right? You probably should have made a decision at some point over the last three, four, or five years maybe where you potentially refinanced to make sure you were in an interest rate that was what? 3% to 4%, something like that would be a realistic interest rate that many people could have got over an extended period of time, even three to four and a half percent interest rate ample time to lock yourself into that degree people like paying off their houses too so that's going to be the people that maybe are still out there right but the point being is that who is going to sell their house man if you have that type of a loan locked in because what you're doing is you're closing out all that benefit you get right you have a 30-year mortgage rate that's locked in well below what the market is at right now. That is gonna create an entire class of homeowners that are never gonna sell, because it doesn't make sense, okay? They can rent if they need to, if you're gonna sell, because their cost basis is so low on a monthly basis payment that to replace that is impossible in this interest rate environment. So those people are taken out of the equation. So those people are never selling, okay? Well, that takes a dramatic amount of supply out of the market. If there's a dramatic supply taken out of the market, right, what should happen? That should cause prices to stay high relative to demand. Well, 
The other side of that equation, though, and this is part of the conversation I was having with my dad this weekend, saying, who's who's buying a house right now at 8% mortgage rate, man, with the payment that that accumulates to? And that's the tough part, man, because no matter what you take that out, it is a real hard one to stomach with mortgage rates pushing that limit. And I'm going to go over it in a second, folks. We'll do the interest rate. You know, I mean, you're talking about, I think it is, I'll pull up the calculator, but I think you're talking about something. I think it's 4,500 bucks. And uh, I won't. I won't do it right now. I'll pull it up during the break. But I think it's about 4500 bucks is what you're paying for a $500,000 mortgage, which would basically mean if you're putting down 20% on a $620,000 house, uh, you're still left with that type of a payment on a monthly basis. And then you have to add in taxes and insurance on top of that, which is going to be a dramatic degree on top of it. It's translating into rent or mortgage rates budging in one way or the other. And that's the level of depth that you have to go to solve that equation. But we're getting some easing today as yields uh, coming down a bit. There's your 10-year. We just hit 113.03. We're at 112.29. And you're talking about a yield right now on the 10-year of about 3.66%. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be back for the opening bell of the month of the quarter, October 3rd, uh, 9.30. We'll be back in about three minutes. Stay tuned, folks. of booming inflation where your purchasing power is eroded, there's no better place to protect your hard-earned money than in gold. Vista Gold's flagship asset is the Mount Todd Gold Project in the Northern Territory of Australia. This is Australia's largest undeveloped gold project. We are talking a world-class gold project in a tier one mining district. This is a large scale, low cost project with significant existing infrastructure in a politically safe and friendly mining jurisdiction. Vista Gold just completed the Mount Todd Feasibility Study, which resulted in a 7 million ounce gold reserve in a 16 year mine life. All of this combined with the approvals of all major operational as well as environmental permits. This distinguishes Mount Todd as an attractive, de-risk partner, ready development stage gold project. Vista Gold trades on the New York Stock Exchange under the symbol VGZ. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com.
Welcome back, folks. We got the S&Ps up 37 points right now at 36.38. The one thing I will say, folks, you take a look at this S&P. You put it on a daily basis, man. All we've done is trade back into the lows, folks, that we had from June. Yes, you've gotten a little bit of a bounce, man. Uh, but please, be careful in this market because, you know, we have a potential channel line of some degree. Almost looks like a little bit of a cone to some degree. Where does that cone bring you back down to? If that's where you're on your way down to, folks, about 3,200. And the dicey thing of 3,200, man, where are you trading back into? Pre-COVID levels, 3,500. Where? Excuse me, 3,400, 3,397 to be exact. But where did we kick off the year in 2020? 3,200. Where did you base a bit towards the end of 2020? About 3,200. And when you take a look at the full Fibonacci number from 2174 up to 4808, where's the 618, folks? About 3200. You see how that could line up there? I feel a lot more comfortable buying this market near 3200 than I am buying it when it's just coming into the prior lows of June uh, at a pretty accelerated pace. We get non farm payroll num numbers on Friday. That'll be an interesting one, folks, as the data is going to determine a lot. And it almost feels like you're hoping. And I get what the exact phrase is, right? But hope is not a plan or something like that. If you find yourself hoping, you're probably in trouble. Um, and that has a lot to do with like sports and stuff like that and, and um, training and whatnot. But it seems pretty hopeful that the data is going to start lining up when for so long it seems like the data has, has been doing its own thing, being pretty elevated for longer than many people were hoping right? Uh, so who's to say that we're like about to turn the corner, okay? Rates may have a say in that. S&Ps, 1,200 points almost off of the highs of 4808 earlier just this year, which is remarkable. Uh, pulling back almost to pre-COVID levels after that full acceleration. We're back to almost a 50% of the entire acceleration during COVID. You have the NASDAQ 100, Okay, NASDAQ 100, remember 9,700 was the highs pre-COVID. Let's take a look on a Fibonacci basis where the NASDAQ 100 is. Yeah, you are already through the 50%. The 618 on the NASDAQ 100, about 10,500. Almost gave it back already as we got to a low of 10,890. Okay, talking a little bit of mortgage rates. So to get the exact numbers I was talking about. First, if you just Google mortgage rates, you're looking at a 30-year. Right there, man, 7.534, and you talk about some moves. Now, 7.534, I was looking at it, $500,000 is about 3,500, where I got 4,500 in my head. As you add in taxes and insurance, depending on where you are, what kind of insurance and what kind of taxes you're paying, let's just say uh, that adds $1,000. In Florida, we got an insurance problem right now. Okay, so in my head, I said taxes and insurance, maybe that's $1,000 right now. For Floridians, it is. That brings you up to 4,500. That's the just now to put that in context, that's a $620,000 house. Let's say you're an investor, even, or if you're just a home buyer, you put down 20%, you put down 120,000 on that property. Okay, that or thereabouts, some ball parking numbers, that leads you to a $500,000 mortgage. So you still have 120,000 down, something like that. Okay. $500,000 mortgage, 7.5%, 3,500. You add in tax and insurance, that's 4,500. Uh, even there's going to be expenses, right? Let's say you're buying this to rent it out or something like that, because that is part of the equation here, folks, um, that it doesn't make sense to buy a property if you can't rent it out to even pay for the cost of buying that property. Those markets are aligned usually. They get out of whack, but they'll come back in too. Um, agreement in some capacity that brings you up to 4500 and change meaning you got to mow the lawn right you have to do this that etc as a landlord to some degree now what's crazy about this is 7.5 the run has been so quick okay that's 3500 even at 4.5 folks it's a thousand dollars cheaper 2500 was the difference so the run from 4.5 to 7.5 has basically meant that you have to get a thousand dollars more in rent a month just to make up for the cost of buying that mortgage. It's crazy when you look at it in that context. And we're sitting at 7.5 and we might go, be going higher, folks, because if the market persists, which it very well may, uh, a lot of talk about, you know, inflation peaking out. But guess what? We have, we have oil prices rising yet again today. That's not going to help, right? What if, what if the offsets that are going to take place in some of the other factors are now going to be hurt by the price of crude yet again? As we have crude up $5. We've been helped a lot by the price of crude when it comes to the run we've had 
folks, it's been a four month downward trend in the price of crude, right? That might not be the continuing trend. So what happens if we get higher pre crude prices? And just look at, I'm gonna take this one off now, okay? We're, we're actually almost sitting right where we were back in the highs of October of last year. But just looking at the run we just had, in terms of the impact that a bounce could have, you're talking about $95 is the 382 and 100 is the 50. In terms of just accelerating from this higher, this lower trend, we get a bounce there. Those numbers are going to contribute. Energy prices are going to start contributing to rising prices on a CPI basis again, right? Maybe not on a core basis, but we have a lot of static to get through in terms of really having numbers that are showing inflation is get down. And if that doesn't happen, where does the Fed go? We're going to find out. Friday, we get non-farm payrolls. That'll be a big one to kick things off. We got market pulling back a little bit as we open. Let's jump into some of the charts. We'll jump into the S&P. That's a pretty quick give back, about 15 S&P points over the last 15 minutes or so. You get the NASDAQ 100, only positive by about four-tenths percent right now, 11,081. We'll get the Dow up 241 right now. A look at that sell-off, inching towards 29,000 right now. We talked about crude. Gold contract this morning up about three dollars at sixteen seventy five, and we jumped to the notes and bonds. A little bit of a give back from that spike high at one thirteen oh three. We're at one twelve twenty five. Still up twenty three ticks though on the ten year. Let's see how the dollar index is doing right now on the open. Dollar index, pretty tame action. Let's see how the pound is trading right now on their news. You get a spike up to 112.08, and as I talked about at the beginning of this program, uh, be careful, folks, because all you're doing is trading right back into that channel line, man. You may be testing that for a lower trade on the pound U.S. dollar, and euro U.S. dollar right now sitting at about 97.5 and just kind of in the middle of its channel line. The upper portion may be approaching parity. The lower portion may be 94 pennies right now on the euro U.S. dollar. All right, let's jump around to some of the equities. We got Tesla. Yeah, slumping lower by 7% this morning for Tesla. So the news out of Tesla this morning. Excuse me as I jump around. Deliveries disappoint due to logistic snarls. 7% wiped out like that. Uh, more of its EVs were in transit at the quarter end is what they were saying. They handed over 343,000 vehicles to customers. The market was looking for 358,000. The stock traded down, yeah, and they missed on that. Uh, they've delivered big batches of vehicles toward the end of each quarter, uh, but guess what? They missed the mark this time. As production volumes continue to grow, it's becoming increasingly challenging to secure vehicle transportation capacity at a, and at a reasonable cost during these peak logistic weeks. They're dealing with problems, folks, in terms of logistics. It's a continuing trend. That's going to impact prices, right? In Q3, we began transitioning to a more even regional mix of vehicle builds each week, which led to an increase in cars in transit at the end of the quarter. Uh, yeah, and they're obviously closely watched. And there's their miss uh, in terms of coming in at 344, but still decent numbers. Tesla down 7%. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. 
His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold. Traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. We get the S&Ps giving it up a bit right now. We're only up by 23 points. We were just coming into the opening bell at a price of about 36.45, and we were just down at 36.17. So you're talking about almost 30 points that gave up a little bit of a bounce right now. Uh, we'll see if that plays out. NASDAQ 100 only up by 35 points right now. As the NASDAQ 100, we just accelerated from 11,000. Let's get the exact high, 135. Yeah, down about 100 points pretty quickly right there. Uh, Going to jump over to a little crypto right now. Uh, Miss Kardashian, she will be paying about $1.3 million is the number. Let's get the number as we pull it up, as we jump around. Uh, oh, come on. I had it up. Didn't I? There we go. Uh, yeah, over a million dollars. Uh, so she got paid 250 grand to be pumping crypto. Not surprising. She's going to pay, uh, 1.26 million. She's worth multiple billion. That's basically pennies on the dollar for nothing. And uh, you're telling me there hasn't been anything else she's been paid for. Uh, but I do have the exact, I think I did, right? Where did I just throw it up? In terms of the tweet that she had up there. Hold on. I got it. Here we go. Uh, are you guys into crypto? It's not financial advice. But here's this pump and dump that I'm going to feed you guys for getting paid a quarter million dollars. Um and, you know, be careful whenever you hear anything like this, folks. Of course, she's getting paid or has some type of kickback. You know, she's not out there doing this out of the kindness of her heart. Uh, Ethereum Max, a few minutes ago, Ethereum Max burned 400 trillion tokens, 50% of their admin wallet giving back to the entire Emacs community. Does that sound a little spammy, folks? Right? Um, who would listen to her? Well, unfortunately, man, um, many, I think. Because... What has she got for followers, man? They're up in like the hundreds of millions, right? Um, something like that. Let's see. I mean, we're Googling it. 318 million, I think, is the number. <laughs> Pretty crazy. Uh, $250,000. That's less than a dollar per person you're reaching, right, to that degree. So that was the tweet, nonetheless. Uh, and she'll be paying $1.26 million. Uh, but buyer beware. Shouldn't be too surprising in the crypto land, man. Uh, pretty, pretty crazy that you can pay her 250 grand, and I'm sure they made out with it. I'm sure it was worth it, which is crazy, to it all. All right, what else do I have pulled up here in terms of talking about uh, oil? Let's talk a little bit of oil. So OPEC, they're on the verge of a quote unquote historic cut. Uh, somebody was saying a million barrels potentially. Uh, they're considering an output cut of more than a million barrels a day. There you go. That's where I read it. According to an OPEC source, the OPEC ministers are not going home to Austria for the first time in two years to do nothing. So there's going to be a cut. 
of some historic kind. Uh, that's one partner in an energy firm, uh, analyst or whatnot. More than a million barrels. Uh, we have somebody here, yeah, the same gentleman talking about maybe around 500,000. Nonetheless, you're looking at a cut, folks. You're looking at a cut when oil is chopping around at a price point of about 85 bucks. But there, you're seeing the run right now this morning up to 84.25, up almost $5 from where it was last Friday. And boy, the geopolitical news coming out of Russia is not good at all, man, in terms of the rhetoric going on over there, the state sponsored rhetoric going on at rallies. Not good at all. Uh, if the markets weren't crashing and yields weren't at 7.5% for a 30 year mortgage and inflation wasn't at 8.5% right now, the risks of war breaking out would be highlighted more throughout what is going on, folks, because this weekend, uh, it seems like things have ratcheted up in the last week or so in terms of Putin's language, the language in Russia. So let's hope that's not the case. But to a market degree, boy, that is some sketchy uh, action going on if war does really break out to a real degree beyond even what's going on right now. Was it with... Anyway, uh, s and is up by 36 right now, 36, 37. Let's jump around to what else I had pulled up here. What do we got going on? Uh, we talked about housing. Yeah, how about Peloton? Seems like a good idea in terms of they are branching out to kind of some of the mainstay plays of bike makers uh, down to 666. This stock, man, up 1.3%, which is basically nothing, though, for this equity. They actually drop to below where they were on Thursday. And you want you want a low to be afraid of, folks? 666 for Peloton. What if I told you, man? What if I told you when Peloton was kicking off 2021 that by the next calendar year, the stock was going to be at 666, man, for Peloton? Uh, I would stay away from this stock, folks. Uh, they're going to have their fitness bikes in 5,400 U.S. tells. Well, that's great. Um, they're already talked about. They're selling the bikes at retailers, okay? But... The only way that I see that company having any future is having the recurring revenue that comes with the subscriptions plans that they would sell. That's what I never could get my mind around is why people were buying bikes that were so expensive that then required you to pay a monthly subscription plan that people are always, I at least, uh, you know, you want to make sure you're using the subscriptions you sign up for and to pay so much for the privilege to subscribe to a monthly recurring plan that basically allows you to use the bike that you just bought for two thousand dollars yeah um but nonetheless the stock interesting it trades lower and they're putting their bikes in hotels i mean they're making deals here you know they're making deals to have their bikes in more places it's a far shift from then when they were just going to be selling bikes to everybody getting them on uh their recurring revenue and so yeah we'll see how that one plays out credit swiss man i could spend a show on that one uh, market turmoil deepens after the CEO memo backfires on Friday. I would say so. I think it was down as much as 12%. Yep, there it is. Uh, trading to a record low that values the firm at less than $10 billion. So one headline out here saying, you know, if um, some city analysts talking about if you're bold enough, it might be the buy there. But boy, you got to be careful when you're talking about capital structures of a bank. Uh, while acknowledging the bank was at a critical moment, quote unquote, he pledged to send employees regular updates until the firm announces its new strategic plan on October 27th. And at the same time, again, sent around talking points to execs dealing with clients who brought up the credit default swap, according to people with knowledge of the matter. Um, the swaps now price in a roughly 23 percent chance the bank defaults on its bonds within five years. That's the number you want to pay attention to, folks, because that's the percentage where people are putting their money behind how they feel and that is a level of default within five years that is pretty drastic for a bank like credit swiss man watch out for that one all right what do we have here let's jump around uh some of the other stocks i talked about at credit swiss tesla um robin hood's closing down some of their offices they're in trouble man robin hood Yeah, down 1.5%. That's your weekly. There's a daily, and you're at the same price that you were trading at basically in January, man, for Robinhood. Crypto was their deal, folks, and crypto is not going to be the same as it was prior um, when they were at their mainstay. So Box. Yeah, they're getting a little bit of a pop-up, 6.4%. Boy, some of these equities, man. 
Um, Morgan Stanley upgraded the cloud computing company to overweight from equal weight, pointing to strong execution and favorable competitive landscape. Not a bad looking chart compared to a lot of other equities this year. You jumped up to 33, but you're basically flat where you kicked off the year um, after you accelerated higher through the better part of 2021. All right, let's jump around to some of the FANG stocks as we come into the break. Amazon, up about half a percent. Apple, the big dog, up barely by about six tenths percent right now. Tesla, on their tough news, down about seven percent to 246. Stay tuned, folks. We've got one more segment. We'll be right back. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no cash or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TF. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the Opening Call newsletter at TFNN.com. The Opening Call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the Opening Call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. DFNN.com. Educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We have the S&Ps up by 32 points, chopping around a bit in both directions on the opening so far. Uh, a couple other points I wanted to make that I was looking at. So JP Morgan, talking about yields, right? They're worried about who is going to buy all the treasuries. The headline there, worried about who's going to buy all the bonds. They remain concerned about the lack of structural demand for treasuries. So this is not just talking about you and me. In fact, they say all of the three main buyers of U.S. government debt, commercial banks, foreign governments, and of course the Federal Reserve itself appear to have stepped away from the market. While some of the retreat is to be expected as the banks taper its balance sheet, the scale of the shift in appetite is still noteworthy. They write, uh, the Treasury holdings have dropped by 180 billion year to date as the central bank 
embarks on quantitative tightening. Meanwhile, commercial banks' collective holdings of treasuries have fallen $60 billion after growing more than $700 billion in 2020 and 2021. Foreign governments have also stepped back, with holdings having dropped $50 billion over the past six months. The point is, folks, yields may be still going up, okay? Uh, you're seeing a little bit of a reprieve today. Um, but, yeah, that that is worth noting, okay? And Morgan Stanley... Uh, Wilson, he's been a bear, so keep that in mind. Uh, the Fed pivot, pivot won't end profit pain. That's an interesting one because many people are looking for the spot in terms of when the Fed may pivot. Um, but if global M2 and U.S. dollars continues to fall at this pace, it does not bode well for stocks in terms of that's the year-over-year -year percentage change versus the current pace of $750 billion per a month in green and the S&P 500 in yellow, you see the catch-up that's necessary, man, uh, for the S&P. So yields, that's an interesting conversation, man, as we get a little bit of a pullback, and we're just back to where we were in the beginning of Friday right now in the 10-year. And yeah, the volatility in yields, man, that is indicative of a shaky market, folks. That's the one I keep my eye on. Stay tuned, folks. We got our man Basil Chapman. He's coming up next with the Tiger Technicians Hour. Of course, we have our man Steve Rhodes at 11 o'clock, Fast Market at 12. Our man Larry Pesavento live at 1 o'clock. Dave White at 2. And my dad, Tom O'Brien, live from 3 till 4. Thanks so much, folks. I appreciate you starting your trading day off with me. And stay tuned. We got Basil up next. Have a great Monday, everybody.